but for Malik, what's so, so much worse is, again, the confused and beaten, dying animal whimpering noises before the end. With I and my team, we are ready to crush the demons into red paste. Well, howdy, howdy, howdy. Nearly senior citizen here, greetings, boys, girls, and all of our non-binary friends, and welcome to this, a brand new day, OP Smokes. Yesterday was, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> it started off not that wonderful. I've been having a lot of phone calls and emails from the VA and providers because there was supposed to be behind the scenes stuff done and with my therapist and then I started up to getting ready for therapy yesterday and my appointment had been canceled. So I left a panicked call with my therapist and there should have been another email sent with new login instructions. So I got my therapy done, but it was like, oh my God, everything is just, they said it was going to be easy and painless and it's been anything but. But thankfully it all worked out and that was good. So I had my therapy yesterday, very, very good. And of course, front loading of YouTube videos. Thank you, YouTube algorithms. Hey, if you could toss me a like, that'd be very cool. If you could subscribe to the channel, greatly appreciate it. If you could leave me a comment, I love comments. I answer each one. No, I read each one. Answer as many as my executive dysfunction will, al will allow. I can speak English, I promise. And of course, I do wish to thank each and every one of my Patreon patrons. These literally beautiful and literally awesome people are, as stated, literally beautiful and literally awesome. They help to keep me alive and that that is appreciated to no end. If you would like to become a beautiful and awesome person, even more beautiful and awesome than you already are, then if you could hit the uh, show more video description and become a patron, very cool. Front loading of YouTube videos over. Thank you, YouTube algorithms. So yeah, it started off rough, and oy vey, I have mentioned before, I have a volatile mood. I have very violent mood swings at times. And yesterday, mid-therapy that happened, we had started veering onto something, but I'd really wanted to talk about this other thing, and so I said, let's take a moment. But then it was like being perched on top of a precarious pole, and I started, I didn't even think about it, Something happened, and it was like, well, why am I even trying? Thunk! Wham! Plunged right there while I was talking to my therapist, and it took a long time of fighting to get out of that. I mean, I just had total flat affect, which is, your affect is how you present. I mean, you see how I do this. When I am feeling halfway good, I talk with my hands. I've got massive facial movements. But when flat affect is just, you just talk like this. You don't present the way you normally do. And so I went from what I had been doing to struggling and fighting while talking with him like this, trying to get my mood back up to where it had been. And that hurt. I was able to pull myself up most of the way, but not entirely. Ugh. But I talked with him, I said, I need someone to really help me. I can't do this on my own. I need help to get applications for the level of help that I need to apply for the level of help that I need. And, uh, and so things are starting to move. He contacted uh, some people at the VA yesterday and they asked if they could contact me. And they were supposed to be calling up today and then they called yesterday and then never again after that one call. I didn't even have my, my, I can't find where my phone is, but you know, the answering machine type thing for my, for my mobile phone set up yet. So hopefully they're gonna call back today. I gotta call my therapist, let him know what happened. Cause even he was saying, yeah, expect to call tomorrow. <sighs> So before I could even get things set up, they tried and then didn't try again. So I've got to call him up so hopefully he can contact them because I don't know exactly who he contacted to say, hey, look, yeah, that was a bit fast. Can you try again, please? 
But on the whole, therapy did go well-ish as it can. I mean, hopefully things are actually starting to move so I can start to get the level of support that I need so I can actually function. My life has been ruined. The only time I've been able to function, even partially, was during the time that my wife was dying in front of my eyes when I was married to her. She provided me with that level of support I needed that I could function as a human being. I couldn't do it beforehand, and I haven't been able to do it since. Yay. So hopefully things are going to go well on that. Uh, sincerely and hopefully. But past that, oy vey, I had some strong staying awake issues yesterday. Ugh, it sucked. But it was only for like two and a half hours. <sighs> but even at that, I tried to do the best that I could. I played some video games. I watched YouTube videos, I thought about stuff, I did physical exercise, you know, when I went for walkies. So it's not like the day was a waste. And after therapy, therapy always pulls things up around up here, so I never get much done. But I try. I try. Plus, I did recording on... It's not... Apparently, everyone's favorite game, the game Hrot, done by a solo developer, I guess he's Czech as well, but it's set in, you know, Chernobyl-type area in the Soviet Union nations back in 86 when all this stuff was going on. Not really Soviet Union, things that were already falling apart, but it was, it's set in that area, in that place, and it's early access, and it's a retro classic boomer shooter, but I love this thing, and I'm almost done, so for everyone that doesn't like it, you know, yay, I'm, I'm almost finished with it. <laughs> but it's a great game, it's awesome. If you like first-person shooters, you should definitely check in the game Frot, H-R-O-T. Apparently it's like check for Spike, so thumbs up for that, but yay. Also, though, I did want to take a look at some of the things that I've written down. I did a lot of thinking about the cryptid yesterday that I had talked about. But another thing that I wanted to mention, I partially brought it up and didn't have a chance to fully go into it because I had so much I wanted to talk about. But I have mentioned before how there's the cosmic horror framework that I use, which is the basis of everything that I write. There's the multiverse, there's the cosmic horrors in our multiverse, and within the multiverse there are individual types of universes. And this particular setting that I have is just one of those universes, but there would be nothing like this in our, multi our multiverse, if not for the cosmic horrors. There is one major cosmic horror, Amigurazu, and her 12 children. Those are the names that I've been putting on my thumbnails of late. Those are the names of her children. One of them is not my favorite cosmic horror. It is Kadiran. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just not my favorite. I like many of the others much more. There are others much less, but at least, you know, it's, it's a thing, and, but it's not my favorite. But whenever I'm writing about human beings and human-type worlds, whenever I come up with a, a cosmic horror to use, it's always Kadiran. And for a time, I was like, why, why? Why is it Kadiran? Why is it this worm, this thing that just is eating its way through reality, is just constantly chewing in its like, Oh, oh, I know why I use Kadiran to represent modern day life. Kadiran, as a cosmic horror, is a representation of endless, mindless consumption. And if you take a look, especially if you live in the United States, we are in, or approaching, strongly and hardly, end-stage hyper-capitalism. Mindless consumption. Eat. Consume. Forever. Yeah, there's a reason that my internal mind parts were using Kadiran to represent, yeah, the United States especially. So yeah, Kadiran ends up getting used as the specter of mindless consumption. So yay. But one of the things I was thinking on about the created being cryptid that I had come up with yesterday is this person, Robert Jenke, a tormented, very ill artist who had a secret patron who kept them pumped with money and introduced them to the 
a whole cult of Kadiran. And so, as the artist Robert Jenke was worshipping at the altar of Kadiran, which in that term means you, you feed your body. Your body is your altar, you feed it. Mindless consumption. And generally, when you eat, like, um, bipeds, and the large amount of bipeds that covers the face of the earth, those bipeds, Kadiran really likes it when you feed the temple that. And so not only was he capturing people to drain the blood out of to soak his contraption slash statue slash sculpture with, also feeding Kadiran, worshipping at the altar. Not a very good individual, but it was when this person was captured and killed, the blood of this and enough of the ritual had begun that life had been given to the sculpture, a created being. But Robert Jenke was killed before being able to give the purpose. So Malik, the Jenke, this urban legend type thing that's been alive since you know, the mid 1800s and has only become self-aware since about the 1950s, yeah, they're, they're because of that, because of Kadiran. And they have no real purpose because Robert Jenke died before doing the second part, giving Malik the reason for being given life. And it wouldn't have been good, Kadiran adherence, uh, it's going to be bad. And so Malik can't even do things like not eat. When it comes time for Malik to consume a human being, if Malik chooses not to, they are effectively kicked out of the driver's seat. And they can only watch from inside as their body goes, okay, let's go eat. And just stealthily hunts, swallows someone down into the cage of the abdomen, and then controls given back to Malik. At which point there's nothing Malik can do. And of course, whoever is inside the the open cage of their abdomen, like that old bull thing, except way back when there was an ancient device where they would put people into a, a metal bowl and then heat up the bowl and they would bake inside. It's like that, except you can see through the bars and they can see out. It's just a cage that they're trapped in. The creature is not an actual creature. And then, of course, they have a minute or two before the, the vine slash tentacles come out, burrow into you, and then start draining you. And as Malik has said, it's bad when they start screaming. Those are bad. The screams of their dying are bad. But what's worse is when it just falls down into the confused, beaten, and dying animal whimpering noises before the end. That's the worst part. And yeah, as a combined human presence, it is killing them to have to do this. Especially since at one point, is there miscommunication? What happens? Normally, three times a year, their human friend, Danny D, heads out of town. About five years before the current part of the story, something happened, and so Malik was out hunting and discovered it was Danny D who hadn't left, at which point it was like, no, no, at which point the body went, you need to eat, kicked him out of the driver's seat, him, them out of the driver's seat of control, ran up and swallowed Danny D down into the cage, at which point... Danny D spends that time assuring Malik that even though they're terrified, even though they know this is the end, even though it's going to be horrible, they don't blame Malik. And they may end up saying things that they don't mean because they're going to be hurting and terrified and dying. But they, they aren't going to mean those things. And yeah, yeah, once again, the screams are bad, but for Malik, what's so, so much worse is, again, the confused and beaten, dying animal whimpering noises before the end.
And I've opened up 24 hours worth of comments in my community tab. And I'm going to go through and thank how many people have left me comments in the past 24 hours. It's never many anymore, but anything more than zero is awesome. Thank you so very much. If I mispronounce the username, no disrespect is intended. And even though I count in American Sign Language, well, with my depression and fibro, my oh, I've got so many issues. Uh, life is life. But let me call it my Chrome. We have Tiara V, who I wish I had uh, been treated for my ADHD. I could not properly react before I was treated for that. Confused Owl 29, good to see you in the comments. Thumbs up. There's Jesse Koskinen, thumbs up, and Helky Smokes. It was good. We're almost done. There aren't many levels left on, on this game. Rod is an awesome game. I love it so much. We have X-A-V-I-E-N Stanley. Xavian, maybe? Thank you very much. There is Space Botnik. Thumbs up and thank you. Scott 49140. Oh, poor comrade Soviet horse. The mind control of this beautiful being. <clears throat> we have I-C-E-A-Y-Y. Thumbs up and thank you. Daniel Fuller. Oh, boy. ADHD sucks. It is so weird. Then there is OS, OSH underscore 93. Thumbs up and thank you. Then there is Honor. Greatly appreciate. Oh, with uh, OSH. Ooh, that was cool. Info on the, the whole uh, soundtrack for Hrot. That They did a, such a good job, that artist. And Honor. Thumbs up. Tunic is good. It's just be prepared. It's not what it looks like. It's a good game. It's just not what it looks like. And there is Ben B. Thumbs up and thank you. And Ice Damon. Greatly appreciated. And oh, Pollen is so much fun. And there we go. 12 people who left me comments in the past 24 hours. Greatly appreciated. Get me out of my head and into the world and dealing with real people. Thumbs up and thank you. And hey, with my hands in the air, don't know what device you're watching this on, but wherever the video description is inside, there are links to my various channels, as well as my Twitter, my Facebook, my Patreon, and again, I wish to thank each and every one of my Patreon patrons. These literally beautiful and literally awesome people help to keep me and my pets, my kitty cat and my little hamster ghost, alive. Thank you so much. I am greatly appreciative. If they could speak English, they would be appreciative. I wish I knew when I, I should bring my hands down. Hopefully I didn't keep them too up or too down. That doesn't make sense, but hopefully you know what I meant. <laughs> As well, if you'd like to help me out without becoming a patron, there is a PayPal link down below. And if you'd like to help me out without sending any money at all, there's also an Amazon wish list link with cat food on it. So if you check that out, that'd be awesome. As well, if you could toss me a like, I appreciate all the positive validation I get from my existence. And if you could hit the notification bell on the subscription button, that would be very cool. Thumbs up and thank you. Yay, greatly appreciated. A definite thumbs up. Well, hokey smokes. Yeah, I'm going to hopefully make at least one or two phone calls today. i got to drop in at the hospital to talk to the business office there at some point. So, ugh, you got to love life. Hopefully you can get done the things you would like to get done. And if you can't, don't feel bad. Don't beat yourself up. There's no need. Beating yourself up is not going to make you do it better next time. It's only going to make you feel bad now. And of course, with the Kofefe bug still raging around the world, this is not over. It's just people have decided, ah, we don't care anymore. Please care. Be smart about it. If other people want to take risks with their health, let them. You don't have to. Be smarter than the people around you. If there is danger, please take your precautions. If there are none, use your intelligent discretion. But you don't need to get this, and you don't need to spread it to somebody whose life will be made so much worse by doing so. Plus, get vaxxed, get your booster. So, until we meet again, you take care. Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side, and quite frankly, I think that's a very good idea.